Yay Networks. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Sour Loss Sweet Lessons. I am your host, Deshauna Barber. Now, for those that have not been to this podcast or heard this podcast, I am Dr. Deshauna Barber. I'm a former Miss USA Army veteran and full time motivational speaker. Sour Loss Sweet Lessons is all about my life experiences, my stories, and the things that I've been through. I go through it so you don't have to. This is a self-care, self-love, self-improvement podcast that is dedicated to redesigning our minds, our perspectives, and encouraging us in our journey, in our road through life. How do we overcome adversity? How do we face hardship head on? That is the goal of this amazing podcast. So thank you so much for joining us. Please hit that subscribe button, that like button. And after this episode, if you enjoyed it, hit the share button and talk to your colleagues, your friends, your families about Sour Loss Sweet Lessons. So let's dive right in to why you shouldn't let society rush you. All right, y'all, I am a 33-year-old, <laughs> 33-year-old young woman, but let society tell it, I am old. <laughs> I don't know what is going on, but I feel as though we are in this weird era of shaming women's ages. Like it is this age shaming era and ageism that's going on. And I want to go over some of my experiences over the years. And I want to give you all some tips and tricks on how not to let society rush you into bad decision making. All right. So first and foremost, around like 27, 28, I, I can say that most women hit this very strange period, especially if you're single with no kids. You reach this very strange space in your mind where you start to really rush things because for some reason we feel like we're on an invisible time limit and it's not something that we created in our minds it is something that society and social pressures are telling us that we're experiencing there is a term that a lot of different countries use which is called leftover women and this is an age group of women that are past their late 20s and they're unmarried with no children. And quote unquote, some people, they pun the term leftover women. And I had that experience where I was watching documentaries. I was looking at, you know, different YouTube content and Instagram content and podcasts and all these people that have mics in front of them trying to tell me that I am no longer as valuable as I was when I was in my 20s or early 20s. And it was a real struggle for me to the point where I ended up in a relationship that I had no business being in and I completely settled for this person because I felt rushed into finding someone and almost having this invisible validation that I'm about to turn 30 and I'm not alone, y'all. It's I'm not alone. I'm about to turn 30. I have someone next to me. And I made a rushed decision to be in this very toxic relationship, very dangerous and abusive relationship, merely because of society's pressure that's placed on us women. And I'm here to tell you all how not to make that decision. And even if you are 75, 80, 85, 90, 95 listening to this, Every human being on this planet is valuable regardless of age, regardless of any demographic that is placed on them, you are valuable. And we can't place value in any one piece of a person's existence, especially their age. So I'm going to dive into the five tips on how not to let society pressure you as soon as we get back from this break. Oh, 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 
Welcome back. All right. So five tips on how not to let society rush you. First and foremost, the reason why I wanted this to be the real dive into Sour Law Sweet Lessons is because I feel so passionate about empowering men and women, people from around the world, to know that we can't place our value in the opinions of other people, in the opinions of the culture that we're in, in the opinions of society. There, there's always going to be something out there in the world telling us that we're not good enough. Like it just, it, it exists. So how do we find the self-confidence, the self-love, and this inner empowered self to be able to push ourselves beyond the opinions and the noise that's constantly yakking in our ear. There's so much noise that in some way, shape or form is telling you that you're not valuable for some reason. And because this podcast is all about self-help and self-improvement and it's about confidence and it's about uplifting And it's about all of these things about how can we believe heavier into ourselves. This topic is so important to me. And it is one of those things that really affected me and affected my decision making that, gosh, if I can get one person not to be as dumb as I was a few years ago, we are on the right path. So (laughs) here we go. Let's let's dive right into tip number one. Control what media you're consuming. I hit the unsubscribe button from so many podcasts and Instagram pages and YouTube channels. And it was very sad because some of these platforms have great advice, but around this late twenties timeframe, I was in such a dark place and my self-confidence was lacking so much that there was this sensitivity and tenderness that I had around me. And I could not allow these platforms and opinions of people that I'll never meet affect who I am and affect my ability to believe that I'm valuable and that I am deserving. So I had to hit that unsubscribe button, that unfollow button. I had to just start really streamlining and vetting all of the content that I was taking in. So if I had to make my first tip, it's going to be what media are you taking in? Are you watching too many red pill style YouTube channels that have a tendency to shame women based on their age, based on having never been married, based on not having children by a certain age? We have to control that media and we have to control what our minds take in because our, that's all we have, everybody. It's, it's what we see. And although this type of content does not have a direct effect on you, it is still a subconscious effect. And that can be just as dangerous as something where someone's directly saying to you, Deshauna, you're too old. Deshauna, you're too old. Deshauna, you're too old. Versus if I'm taking in content that talks about somebody that's 30 plus and is too old, That's subconsciously bashing my brain, telling me, okay, not valuable, not valuable, not valuable. And as it starts to like roll around in your brain, it really does become a negative effect on your own confidence, especially for those that fit in that category of bashing. So lock away from that media, guys. Hit the unfollow button. The next thing is asking yourself before a decision is made, Am I doing this for myself or another person's opinion? Why am I doing this? Am I doing this because I want to do this? Or am I doing this because somebody else has an opinion about it? Or because society says this? An example, I got into a relationship in my late 20s. Not necessarily because I really like the guy. (laughs) Not necessarily because he was like some hot commodity. I got into this relationship because I was pushing 30 years old and I wanted this invisible validation of saying, I may not be married at 30, but I'm in a relationship at 30 and I'm on my way to marriage. That 
invisible validation that does not exist in real life. Okay. And next thing you know, I end up in this highly toxic situation with someone that absolutely did not deserve me. And because of that, I wasted years in a situation with someone versus taking time to continue to find myself, to continue to build myself and continue to grow Deshauna as a person in preparation for my future partner. We have to make the decision. Why are we doing this? And oftentimes, if you do that, you'll figure out that a lot of decisions that we're making are because of the opinions of other people and not necessarily because of something that we actually want. So that's lesson two. Lesson three, am I doing this for social media? What I did when you guys will meet my, my husband, his name is Marvin. Uh, you will meet him soon because he's going to definitely be a part of this show for a good amount of episodes. I waited a good second before I posted him on Instagram, before I posted him on social media, because I had to really ask myself, why am I posting him on social media? Am I posting him on social media because I have the validation of being able to say, oh, I have a man, honey, I have a man. No, 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 no. I posted him on social media because we got to a point in, in our relationship where I realized, wow, this man really is my person, I love him. And I want to share our relationship with my followers. So that's a different reason for why I decided to choose social media is by deciding that I want to share my life with my followers, not I want validation for my followers to know that I'm in a relationship. You know, society, culture. And social media has become this like platform that is all about what other people think. I have episodes coming up about social media, y'all. And what it has done to us as a community of people, especially young, uh, our young generation of people, just the, the, the we, we post too much of ourselves. And oftentimes we're posting it for just the absolute wrong reasons. The reason why I've been excited to launch Sour Law Sweet Lessons and talk about my life is not because I'm looking for some sort of clout or validation. It is because I'm hoping that people are going to learn from the things that I'm doing here. So the goal is for, I want people to learn from me, not because, oh, the followers, the followers, the attention. It's, it's not really something that I care about. So I always ask myself, why, why, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Recently, I was watching a YouTube, and I'm not going to tell you all what YouTube channel it was because I am, <laughs> it's like very like he man, woman haters club type YouTube channel. And this person specifically said, why would I date a 35 year old if I could date a 25 year old? And it's like, wow, you're so concerned about age and not about a person's character. It's very strange. And I thought heavily because, you know, my husband is three years younger than me. <laughs> so he just turned 30 and I'm 33. So I spoke with him about, and I think I even showed him the clip and I was like, what do you think about what this person is saying? And he's like, women are so strange because this wouldn't be a man you would date in real life anyway. So why do you care about the opinion of someone that you don't respect, that you wouldn't be interested in in real life? Why, why even care about the opinions of particular individuals that you this isn't a person that you care to get to know anyway. And I said, you know, that's so true that sometimes we're looking at different individuals and we're taking in the opinion of someone that we would never respect in real life. We would never have a relationship with in real life. And somehow this individual is pushing us to make decisions we would normally not make, or they're pushing us to feel down about ourselves, 
But it's like, I would never surround myself with this person in real life. So why do I care? And he proceeded to tell me that real men aren't looking at a 35 year old woman and a 25 year old woman and saying, I'm going to pick the 25 year old merely because she's 25. A real man is going to stare and evaluate and vet the character of each individual woman and make a decision based on that. Any man that is so focused on a person's age and not on their character is not a man we should care about anyway. And I said, ooh, mm, that was good. That was good. And it just made me realize I'm just taking in the opinion of people and I need to really stop doing that. And I, you know, I stopped years ago and I really stopped caring. And I got to a point where I was, I'm, I, I'm not kidding you all when I say this. I got to a point in my dating experience where I was absolutely prepared to be 75 with 20 cats alone. I was prepared. I was at that point. <laughs> I was at that point and I sat back and said to myself, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that because it is so much better to be alone than be miserable with somebody you don't want to be with. Trust me. Trust me. We have to choose peace and not choose opinions. We have two more lessons left. I'm going to let y'all jump to break. And when we come back, we're going to close out with these last two lessons. See you in a sec. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. So there was a time when I had absolutely no idea where I was going in life. And I think a lot of people can relate because this was 2020, right when COVID hit. I was still a full-time motivational speaker and all of my motivational speaking gigs were canceled for the rest of the year. There are so many moments in life where the path is unclear, the journey is unclear, you have no idea what your next move is. And especially when it comes to your career, when it comes to relationships, your hobbies, all the things that you like in life, what do we do next? Therapy is a way to stay connected with those things. It's a way to stay aligned and it's a way to really be able to look at the healthiest way to deal with adversity. I personally love therapy because it helps me maintain a healthy mindset. When I'm faced with challenges, I'm provided strategies and methods to be able to overcome those challenges. If you're thinking about trying therapy, I suggest you try BetterHelp. It's entirely online and it's designed to be convenient and suited for your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash lessons today and get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash lessons. All right, welcome back. We are down to our last two tips of how not to let society pressure you. The fourth tip is, am I moving slowly to ensure I'm in the relationship for the right reason? Moving slowly. I mean, turtle level slow. Because <laughs> especially when it comes to relationships, People can really hide themselves and camouflage their biggest flaws and their biggest levels of toxicity. And if you move too quickly, you'll brush straight past the, the toxic moments and the red flags and they look a little burnt orange and they're not quite red yet. Those are the moments in which you need to stop. Slow down. Was that red? What was it? So with my husband, and it's so weird to say my husband, we've been married for like two months, y'all. It's really new. Um, I moved <laughs> so slowly. Even we didn't move in together until after having been together for two years. I don't know. People might, people might not think that's slow, but I think it's slow, you know. And coming from where I was in life, I would move in with a guy after being with them for maybe a year. And so, you know, two years is slow for me. 
But what, whatever your definition of slow is, move even slower than that, right? <laughs> whatever is slow, take it down about 10 more knots. That's slow. That should be slow. And this was before I meet your parents, before I meet your friend group, before you meet my parents, before you meet my friend group, before we go on a trip together, before we do this, before slow, slow, slow. Even before I first said, I love you, that took a while. <laughs> that took a while. Like I made sure we were past that super weird infatuation phase where you're completely blinded by <laughs> this, just the newness of it. I waited a long time before even disclosing that I had fallen in love with him because take it slow. You just don't know. And you don't know if you're moving this along quickly for society so that you can hurry up and jump into this marriage, so that you can hurry up and jump into this relationship, so that you can hurry up and have these kids. You're moving quickly because of that. Or are you moving quickly because you really want to deeply get to know this person? Because the truth is, the longer we spend with the wrong person is the longer we have to wait before we find the right person. So take your time in vetting people because I spent a decade in relationships I had no business being in. I probably would have been married by 26 if I had just taken my time and not wasted a year with this guy and a year with that guy and a year with this guy. I just was like, I got to be married by 30. And it was the absolute most ridiculous standard and timeline to place on myself. So I had to really take a step back and say, wow, I'm really doing this completely wrong. The goal is to find your person. I have a close friend of mine that did not find her person until she was in her 50s. And she is happy as a peach, okay? I mean, completely happy with her um, soon-to-be husband. And she's in her 50s. So I would wait till 50. I would absolutely wait till 50. There, there's literally no rush. There's so much life ahead of us. Stop rushing. Stop caring. I have another episode that's going to be coming up on the docket in a few months, which is how not to care about people's opinions, which really does align with societal pressures, but societal pressures is very much specific to women. Specific to women, a man could be 40, unmarried with no kids and no one would question a thing. But a woman, they question that. They, they have questions. And that's really just an unfair double standard going on here. And it really pushes women into really problematic situations. I've seen women that have married wrong, had kids early. They were nervous about fertility issues. I'm very much aware at 33 that by the time I have kids, fertility might be an issue. That's a possibility. But my goal is to have kids with the right person, no matter how long it takes. I would rather have kids at 45 with the right person than kids at 25 with the wrong person and have to deal with them for 18 years. It's, I'm not interested. So we have to remove this pressure that we have on ourselves, ladies and gentlemen. Let's let it go. Let's let it go. The next lesson, I'm looking down at my notes. Am I subscribing to the societal belief that more that the more successful you are, the less likely you are to find a partner. Are you shrinking yourself because you're afraid that if you have too much success, you won't be able to find a partner, ladies? There was a time in which I wasn't, I was ready to like slow down my career. Because I'm like, well, maybe I'm not finding my person because I'm just too successful. So let me slow down my success. And imagine deciding to hinder myself for the person that is supposed to be my partner in life. The Lord knows. 
the heavens knows that I am naturally an ambitious person. Whether I have a partner or not, I am ambitious. To have to lock myself into this shell and remove this ambition because I believe that my person will be intimidated by that ambition, it does not equal out. Because if this person truly is my person, my life partner, my soulmate, they will love every part of me. And ambition is a part of that. So you have to ask yourself, are you preventing yourself from being the totality of who you are for fear of running off your person? There's no way you can do that. You cannot run off your person, your soulmate, for being exactly who you are. Because if that person is your person and they're built for you, they're going to love every piece of that. So it was such a misguided perception to think, okay, Deshauna, let me slow down my success because it might run off my partner. But then I realized, but if they are my soulmate, they would love every piece of who I am and being ambitious is who I am. So some of you are like holding off on the book, writing a book as in, some of you are holding off on writing a book, you're holding off on purchasing a house, you're holding off on taking that promotion, you're holding off on buying that new car, you're holding off on doing specific things because you believe that ambition is going to drive off your life partner. And I'm here to tell you that that's not the case. Your life partner is made for you. Therefore, they will love every category of your character. And if ambition is a part of your character, then continue to pursue your ambitions. And your person will love that. I'm not shrinking. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. And then little did I know, or at least maybe I did know, but I'm not shrinking for anyone. And lo and behold, my partner, my husband loves my ambition. As a matter of fact, he actually is not attracted to women that don't have ambition. <laughs> he talks about it all the time, the times where he was dating women and then he found out that they lacked ambition and then he said, hey, you know, this isn't working out. And that's because he was waiting on me. <laughs> I was out there in the world, we were looking to find each other. So again, if you're shrinking yourself because you think that your ambition is going to run off your person, I'm here to tell you that's not true. They're going to love that. So let's recap. Number one, control the media that you're consuming. Number two, am I doing this for myself or for another person? Ask yourself that question. Number three, am I doing this for social media? Number four, am I moving slowly to ensure I'm with the right person? Number five, do I believe that my success is going to make me less likely to find my person? Those five tips, everybody. How not to let society pressure you. Those five. Now, if you enjoyed this podcast, this episode, I want you to hit the subscribe button, the like button. I want you to reshare. I want you to leave a review. And I want you to share this show with your friends, your family, your colleagues. There's probably somebody out here that you're like, oh, this would go perfect for my friend who's making this mistake and this mistake and this mistake. Please pass this podcast along. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Thanks for joining. Bye-bye. Yay Networks.